She's afraid of. <laughs> Don't forget, Dick, you're driving me home. I won't. I'll be back. Let's go again, folks. Remember, this is a very worthy cause. Oh, darling, I forgot to say goodbye to Mrs. Fed. Oh. Number 24 wins. That's my number. What do I get? Uh, never mind. I'll explain to Mrs. Fairbanks. Well, now, don't you forget. No, 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 no. Sometime later. Don't, don't worry about it. Seven days a week, and your sister picks on Saturday to have a birthday. Why doesn't she give a party when I'm working? Because then she'd be in school. <laughs> Children are quite a problem, aren't they? <laughs> Look, Linda, let's get married right away and worry about our own little problems. Oh, darling, let's not go into that again. I want our marriage to be a permanent thing, not something that breaks up after a little while. The way we love each other, not a chance. Besides, I make a good salary. Oh, oh. Anyway, money isn't everything. No? Then who is that man? Someone you owe? Oh, no, that's Gibbons. He's just a fast promoter. He wants to give me a job selling some of his worthless real estate. I just can't seem to get rid of the guy. But you want your husband to be an honest man, don't you, even though he isn't wealthy? Oh, darling, we don't want to be wealthy. We, we just want to be happy. Well, you silly, we are happy. And we want to stay that way. So we better wait until you've saved a little more. Mm. Here you Mr. are. Bakewell, is Richard here? Uh, no, Miss Miller, he just left, but I expect him back. All right, thank you. You're right as usual, but it's going to take a long time. Oh, doesn't matter, darling. I don't mind waiting. So long. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, darling. What happened to your business? Well, it was all right till I had to start giving away these kind of things. Say, I just saw Gwenny Miller. Yeah, so did I, but she didn't see me. She won't if my luck holds out. Why don't you tell her you're engaged to Linda? Say, the only chance I get to open my mouth around Gwenny is when I yawn. Besides, Linda wants our engagement kept a secret. Well, I don't think it's right for you to let Gwenny moon over you the way she does. The girl is definitely in love with you. She's a friend of my grandmother's. You imagine things. I do? <laughs> well, what about Barbara? I suppose I imagine that, too. Oh, Barbara, well, that's different. I mean, after all, we ran around together last summer, but now it's all over. <laughs> well, the way you act when she's around, I... Oh, how about it, folks? Would you be interested in buying a chance? We there you are. Oh, oh, it's a good there take you a chance. Are. You might win one of these beautiful <laughs> hand-embroidered uh, things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Sutton, I've been looking all over for you. Have you, Mrs. Fairbanks? Yes. Come along with me. I have a surprise for you. Oh, good. <laughs> Gwenny, look, I have a customer for you. Oh, hello, Richard. Hello, Gwen. How many chances will you take? Well, I'll take one. I have been very lucky today so far. Oh, uh, Mrs. Williams, uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, surely. I uh, think I'll run over and see your grandmother this afternoon. I haven't been in since Wednesday. Yes, yes, why don't you do that? I will. Are uh, you going to stop by? Well, hardly this afternoon, Gwen. Uh, she's looking a lot better these days, don't you think? Is she? Oh, yes, yes. Poor dear Grandma Sutton. She has such a weak heart. Come now, Gwen, I don't think she's as bad as all that. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder, really, if she's as ill as she thinks she is. Why, Richard? Well, she must be in a bad shape. Dr. Hamilton says she is, and he should know. Why, only last night he told Father that 
that any shock might be fatal to poor old Gwen. And so we're just going to bear with her a little longer and be as nice to her as we can, aren't we? Well, yes, of course. After all, she is my grandmother. I had no idea of going up there and beating her. Oh, Richard, uh, yes. you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Fairbanks. Uh, excuse me, Gwen. I'll come back and win that later. Have you a call for Richard Sutton? Hello, Richie boy. Oh, well, uh, who or uh, what? Uh, who is this? Girl Scout number 27, doing your good deed for the day. Oh, hello, Barbara. I saw you marooned as little Gwenny Miller, so I thought I'd come to your rescue. Was that nice of me? Yes, it certainly was, thanks. Where are you? Right next door. Oh. Next door? <laughs> well, Barbara, it's been ages since I've seen you. And whose fault is that? Well, I've been so busy, the office, you know. <laughs> I thought maybe I had offended you in some way. Oh, no, Barbara, you know differently. It's just been work, the office, you know. I believe you said that already. I did, didn't I? <laughs> well, uh, shall we go in? <laughs> All right. Got a lot of games in here. There we are. Now let's see who's got I was asking about you on the other day. Why don't you drop in tomorrow night? Well, tomorrow night I was well, going to... Monday then. Well, you see, Mondays I've always gone to the... Goodness, Richard, you are a popular person. You're wanted on the phone again. Really? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Fairbanks. Excuse me, Barbara. Mm, I'll be waiting. Oh, Barbara, I, uh, I have a feeling that that caller from Gibbons, the promoter, would you do me a favor and take the message, if you please? Oh, of course. Thanks. I'll handle him. I'll take Mr. Sutton's call, please. Oh. Uh, hello, Barbara. Why, Granny, I didn't know you were here today. <laughs> uh, the bazaar seems very successful, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? You look as if you'd just seen a ghost. Well, not exactly. I just saw Barbara, and I want to get out of here before I see her again. Ah, so that's it, eh? Well, look, if lightning's going to hit you, it's going to hit you no matter where you go. Well, if it's going to hit me, it's got to find me first. There we are. Here we are. Remember what it caused, it caused. Now, we all ready again? Looking for someone? Um, no, are you? Uh, no. <laughs> then, um, let's not look for him together. I will sit. Oh, uh ah. -uh. Ah. <laughs> I better get out of here. I'll see you at home. Take a taxi, will you? So long. Pardon, pardon me. No, no, pardon me. Oh, pardon me. Certainly. What would you have, sir? A uh, bourbon highball. Yes. Hello, Sutton. I had a hunch I'd find you here today. You did. I thought you were going to call me at the office during the week. Did I say I would? Well, I asked you to. Say, what's this, Red Cross Day? Yeah, help yourself. Thanks. Well, have you uh, bought it over? Bought what over? You know, Richard, you're becoming very difficult. You know, you're the type of person who likes to remain in a rut. I prefer to one, too, will you? Hey. You meet a much better class of people. Well, you can stay on with Mitchell and make a living, sure. But what I'm offering is a... Gibbons, for the thousandth time, I do not want to peddle lots for you. Nor anyone else. Now, excuse me, but please. But this isn't selling property. It's getting a limited number of very carefully selected people to invest in one of the greatest subdivisions in Fairview. And because these people are so carefully selected, it requires a very competent man to interest them. And you're the man. You've got the personality, Dick. You've got the looks. Why, you can hypnotize them, old boy. I don't seem to be doing so very well with you. Well, I can offer you a straight 4,000 and a flat 20 cents on every dollar you bring in. Uh, look here, Gibbons. Uh, it becomes uh, increasingly apparent that I'm going to have to tell you something that I hadn't intended to tell anyone. You were... Uh, you realize, of course, that what I'm about to say is in the strictest confidence. 
I've inherited a fortune. Inherited a fortune? Well, jump in Jupiter, I hadn't heard a thing about this, Dick. I, I told you this in the strictest confidence, so that settles the whole matter. Well, when did it all happen? I didn't know you had any wealthy relatives. Shh, shh, shh. It was an uncle that died. He lived in Brazil, long way away. I uh, hadn't intended to tell anyone, you see, but I, I'm telling you to explain why we can't get together and do any more business. But we can. Why, now more than ever. Why, with this vast fortune at our disposal, we can keep the entire proposition to ourselves. You've got the cash actually in hand, haven't you? Sure, of course not. No, you see, it's, it's all tied up in long-term loans. I get the income, of course, but I can't touch a penny of the capital for years. Well, all right, all right, but how much is the income? Gibbons, you realize, of course, that you're prying into my personal and private affairs. Oh, now, wait a minute, Dick. I didn't mean it that way at all. Well, that's the way I took it. Well, you're not offended. I certainly am very much offended. That you, Charlie? Uh-huh. Sorry I had to walk out on you. Hope you're not angry. I said I hope you're not sore. No, I'm not angry. When are you moving? Huh? I said, when are you moving? Moving? Who said I was moving? Well, naturally, I just took it for granted. What the dickens are you talking about? I may be unduly sensitive about such things, Richard, but it does seem to me you might have told me yourself. I warned you about playing tennis without a hat. Told you what? About the fortune you inherited, of course. What fortune? Oh, oh, that. <laughs> Who told you? Practically everybody. They all ask me the details. They naturally assumed that I'd be the one to know. Well, that's not true, you poor fathead. You ought to know that. But they said that you... I don't care what they said. I still insist I have no fortune. I wish to goodness I did have. But Gibbons himself told me that you had been inherited. Yeah, but look, he kept hounding me with that fool job of his. That's my tie you've got there. Yeah, I know it. So to get rid of him, I told him that my uncle Woodrow in Brazil, it died, left me his fortune. Well, that's all. Forget it. You lied to him? Yep. A deliberate lie? Well, if you want to call it that. But you, of all people, it isn't the lie itself. It's the principle of the thing. Look, if I'd known I was going to get you all in an uproar like this, I'd have let Gibbons talk me deaf, dumb, and blind. But it's too late now, so do me a favor, will you? And forget it. After all, it was only a little white lie. Richard. Yeah. We've been friends for a long time, haven't we? That's your life. Good friends. If you're worried about your tie, I promise to take very good care of it. Richard, I'm going to talk to you straight from the shoulder. I don't like to hear you lie. It hurts me. Well, you didn't hear me lie, so you're not hurt, right? I wish you wouldn't try to evade the thing like that. I'm not trying to evade anything. What do you want me to do? Jump out the window? Now, please, let me have my say. Oh, go ahead and talk. Get it out of your system. Richard, all real human trust is founded on a bedrock of solid truth. So far as my memory goes, that's the first time I ever heard you tell a lie. Dick, there's no such thing as a white lie. There's no such thing as a lie without evil consequences. Now, I know just as absolutely as I know that I'm standing here that something bad has grown out of every lie that has been told since the beginning of time. Oh, I don't mean to say that every little slip from the truth entails the burning of a city or the wrecking of a life. Some of the consequences are so small as to seem imperceptible. Uh, but they're there. They're there just the same. Why, I have seen the most amazing chain of disasters grow out of the... Uh, hello? Uh, Bakewell speaking. You want to talk to Richard? Oh, this is Richard. Hello, Dick. Uh, you'll be back in an hour? Or are you going over to see your grandmother? Well, give her my best, will you? All right, goodbye. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Now, I have seen the most amazing chain of disasters grow out of the... Well, he's gone. He's so absent-minded, he forgot to say goodbye. Jane, how's Granny? Oh, she's fine today, Mr. Richard. She's expecting you. Ah, there you are at last, my boy. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> Glad to see you. Well, Hello, Granny. Come over here and kiss me, Richard, dear. <laughs> so glad for your sake, boy. <laughs> How does it feel to inherit a fortune, my boy? Oh, oh, about that. When did you get the news, Richard? This morning? 
Yes. There, you see, I told you so. Now, your grandmother was greatly astonished that you hadn't told her first. Well, uh, I see it's getting late and I must be going. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Sutton. Uh, Richard, uh, you'll see me out, won't you, please? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Excuse me, Sonny. Richard, in all the years I've been treating her, nothing has affected her so splendidly as your good news. Oh, well, listen, Doctor, I, I haven't any talking about. You, you haven't? No. Well, Mitchell said you inherited three million dollars. Why, why, my, that's bad. That's too bad. Yes, I agree with you, it's too bad, but that's the way it is. Oh, my dear boy, you don't realize the seriousness of the situation. Why, were you to go back into that room and tell your grandmother that you really had not inherited your uncle's money, why, the shock would kill her. Are you serious? I'm not serious. I was never more serious in my life. Oh, dear me, what would you Can't you do something, Doctor? I can't. But you can. You must continue the deception. You mean I, I'm to lie to her? Not only to her, to everybody in town. Otherwise, she's sure to find out, and that would be fatal. Richard! But remember, not a word to anyone. Not a word to anyone. What were you doing out there all this time? You know I'm just dying to hear all the details. Sit down and tell me all about it. Well, uh, <laughs> there, uh, there's much to tell, Grandmother. Land's sake. You inherit three million dollars and you've nothing much to tell? It was three million, wasn't it? Oh, yes, of course. Three million. What else do you want to know, Grandmother? What else? You haven't told me anything. How did you happen to hear about it? Well, I, uh, got a letter this morning. Oh, from a law firm, I suppose. Oh, yes, yes, from a law firm. Who are they? I had it right on the tip of my tongue. Um, Wells, Shakes and Husing. Yes, that's it. Wells, Shakes, and Husing. Get them on the phone for me. Ah, but they, uh, they wouldn't be open on Saturday afternoon. Many law firms are. Well, even if they are, Mr. Mr. Bowler is not there. I'm sorry, Grandmother. I spilled your pills. Are these peppermints, Grandmother? Do you, do you mind if I have one? Yes, yes. I can remember your grandfather acting just like that whenever he didn't want to discuss a thing. Let me have the letter. I can get the details from that. Well, I uh, left that one down at the office. Mitchell's office. Richard, do you mean to tell me you left it in your desk? In Mitchell's office? Oh, dear me, no, no. I, it, uh, it's in the safe. You can show it to me Monday. Can I? Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, I mean, I will. You haven't had much time for planning, I have to be sure, but uh, why not travel? On what? Uh, what for? I'm uh, not very fond of traveling. There, I knew I could trap you into admitting it. Trap me? Yes, there must be a girl involved. Well, as a matter of fact, Granny, there is. Mm, I knew it. Oh, she... She's so sweet and so lovely. She's so... a very, very lovely girl. And nothing could have given me so much. Oh, there she is. My darling, how well you look today. I uh, didn't expect to see you or I'd have... My darling, my darling, I'm so glad. Richard just told me. Told you what, Granny? How, how, how much he loves you. Why didn't you tell me first, dear? Well, are you... Why? Were you afraid? Oh, I'm so... so happy. <sighs> Is anything wrong, Mrs. Sutton? No, I'm just happy. Richard has just proposed to Gwendolyn. Oh, it's happened at last. Oh. <laughs> Darling, I'm so happy. <laughs> Give me the smelling salts. Give me the smelling salts. <laughs> That 
nasty little cat snared you into proposing, huh? Oh, excuse me. Well, I never really proposed. She's just telling everyone in town that you're engaged to her. Well, uh, I am in a way, but it all happened so suddenly, so unexpectedly. Yes, knowing that she tricked you, you still don't see any way of avoiding it? Well, well, supposing my uh, grandmother's health and happiness depended on it. She's so infernally fond of Gwenny, you know. She must be still fond of you, dear. <sighs> Probably. Then wouldn't she be much happier if she knew you were going to marry the girl you really love? Hmm? Well, um, if I went to her suddenly and upset all her ideas and uh, shocked my... Oh, now, why need to be any shock? Why don't we be daft and artful and just... He's Gwenny out of the whole thing so gently, she'll hardly know what's happened to her. Mm -hmm. Could it be done? Oh, that darling. I suppose there are times when a woman just has to take things into her own hands. When you were poor Dick, I understood. I even admired you for staying away from me, but, oh, it did hurt. Barbara, I, uh... You might have asked me at any time, you know. And even though you didn't have a cent in the world, I'd have found some way of making Dad consent. It's awfully warm in here. Don't you think maybe we could open the window? Ah, oh, Dick, darling. I suppose you know I'm asking you to marry me. Oh, Dick, dear, you do love me, don't you? Well, don't you? Uh -huh. What? Oh, sure, sure. Ah, oh, oh. darling. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, good gracious, Dad, you might at least make a little noise when you come in. What does this mean? Well, it means exactly what it seems to mean, Dad. Richard and I are going to be married, and we want your blessing. Well, if it's settled, there's apparently nothing more that I can add. You lived up to your principles and waited until your ship came in, eh? I'm glad you waited. I think that you should... Well, I've got to be going. Congratulations, my boy. You've got a fine girl there, the very best. Uh, I hope you get married soon, Richard. I have some great plans in store for you, you know. Well, come, come, my boy, speak up. Well, say something, Ducky. Hmm? Oh, good night, sir. Hmm. A funny way to propose. Oh, I guess he's just been working too hard, Dad. It doesn't seem to me that you're trying very hard to help me out of this predicament. I'm working up to an idea here. In order to be mentally alert, one must be physically fit, you know. By the time you become physically fit, I'll be in jail for bigamy. Well, you can't have everything. You have the physique, and I have the brain. Well, stop bragging about it and use it. All right. But first, there are a few things I'd like to know. Why did you propose to Linda? Well, because I'm in love with her. Ah, there we have the affectionate impulse. And you became engaged to Gwendolyn for the sake of your grandmother's health. That gives us the humanitarian pulse. But why, oh, why did you get engaged to Barbara? I don't know. Unless perhaps it was because I was sleepy. What uh, kind of an impulse would you call that? That, my dear fellow, is the primitive and barbaric kind. Anyway, the fact remains that I'm engaged to three women and we'd better do something about it. Well, it could be worse, you know. Think of King Solomon. I wonder how he could rid of him. Oh, very simply, I should imagine. Same. That gives me an idea. You're not suggesting that I... Barbara is a proud and high-spirited young woman, isn't she? She has a quality of high esteem, hasn't she? Oh, decidedly. Then she's very easily offended. You get the idea? Now, here's my suggestion. Go and see her. Be critical. Irritate her. Sneer, if necessary, at uh, something she fancies. Oh, I know it sounds cold-blooded and candish, but there's no alternative. In other words, pick a quarrel with her, and she'll break the engagement. Do you think it's safe? Certainly. I'll do it. I'll do it now. Richard, darling, why are you up so early? You were so tired last night. Barbara, I'm perfectly able to take care of myself. Of course you are, dear. But you work so hard, you need your rest. Well, never mind about me. Where are you going? But darling, what's wrong? Wrong? Nothing. Should there be something wrong? No, no. Where, uh, where did you ever get that uh, hat? Oh, 
Ebel, Fifth Avenue, why? Well, uh, I don't like it. It uh, looks like something out of a cartoon. Oh, well, darling, I'll never wear it again. Maybe, um, maybe it's the way you've got your hair fixed. Hey, uh, who uh, selected that dress? Dress? What? I did. Don't you like it either? No, oh, I should say not. Oh, Richard! Well, to <laughs> tell the truth about that dress, it's, uh... Oh, oh, so now you're angry. I've hurt you. Well, if you're going to act this way about a little thing like that, it... Oh, stop sniveling. Well, if that's the way you feel, or... Richard. Yes? Let's get married right away. What? Oh, darling, all this excitement has upset you. You need me. You need a good wife to take care of you. I do not. Oh, yes, you do. You've been working too hard. And darling, don't you worry for one little instant about the way I look. After we're married, you may select every little thing I wear, everything I buy, and everything. Oh, darling, you're so masterful. <laughs> Oh, dear. Linda, you are... Oh, darling, you're so masterful. Oh, now, wait a minute, Linda. I can explain that. Explain what, you you millionaire playboy? Oh, I can explain that, too. You see, it all started with a lie. No doubt. You seem to be an expert at lies. Oh, don't. Oh, my. Linda! Oh, Linda, I know it looks bad, but if you'd only give me a chance... Let me go. Not until you listen. Let me go or I'll scream. Oh, don't do that. Linda! Hey, oh, wait a minute. I've been watching you. Getting so a woman ain't safe on the street nowadays. Yeah? How would a punch in the nose suit you? Suits me fine. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I don't know. Yes, I'll tell him. Yes, yes, I I'll be sure to tell him. Yes, goodbye. Oh, that was Gwenny on the phone. She's been calling you every five minutes since you left. Well, how did it work? Oh. Oh, I say. It wasn't necessary to go to extremes. I hope you didn't hit her back. Don't give me any ideas. How does it look now? Oh, that looks much better, Mr. Sutton. Thank you. Here we go. Well, made any plans yet, Dick? Not one. Really? Most young fellows would have 50 years amusement all plotted out by this time. The whole trouble with you is you're too conscientious. You don't seem to realize that you're a very wealthy man. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Tut, tut, my boy. You're in a rut, and I want to see you happy. If you had no job, you'd probably do all these things, now wouldn't you? Well, to be perfectly frank... Certainly I... you would. And that's easily settled. You have no job. You're fired. Well, I never thought I'd see the day I'd say that to you. Cream my lemon, dear? Uh, nothing. No. Yes, Richard is a dear boy, isn't he? I know him quite well, you know. We were together quite a lot last summer. You do know so many men, darling. I don't for the life of me understand how you've managed to stay single. Well, it is a little difficult. I mean, as far as money and all that, but I think I've found the right one now. You have? Oh, isn't that just lovely? Who is it? Or is it a secret? Well, it is. John Cartwright to see Mr. Sutton. John Cartwright? Send him in. Well, that's the first time that old bird has ever been up in my office. <laughs> Well, you know, you millionaires stick together, don't now, you? Wait a minute, Mr. Mitchell. There's, there's something I must tell oh. you, Dick. Hello, Mitchell. Hello. Hello, Richard. Oh, well, you, you look all right to me. Uh, outside of the shiner. <laughs> she told me you was ill. Ill? Richard ill? 
Who said that? Gwen? Uh, if I know, no, no, no. My grandmother said that. Oh. Even the heart she is. Uh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Mitchell. So nice to see you. Thank you for all the very nice things you said. Oh, here's that hat I was telling you about. It's adorable. Uh, do you mind if I try it on? Oh, I want you to. I've only worn it once. My fiance didn't care for it. Why, how absurd. I'm sure Richard will just adore it. Oh, do you think so? Well, uh, you may have it. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Oh, but I insist. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me just a moment. Richard, darling. Ah, oh, this is a surprise. Mm. You better run along with me, Dad. I think Richard and Gwenny want to be alone. Alone? What for? Oh, and I don't ask any questions. Oh, everybody's pushing me around today, and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell her now? As good a time as any. <clears throat> Richard, what's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of what? She kissed you. Oh, oh that was nothing. Nothing? No, you see, it's her, uh, it's her father. Business. Does she have to kiss you so you can do business with her father? Gwendolyn and I, I can't offend her just now. Offend her? Well, I like that. What about me? Well, I'll, uh, I'll explain everything when we're alone. But for the present, you're just going to have a lot of, have to have a lot of faith in me. You, you do trust me, don't you? Yes, I do. But I don't trust her. Well, never mind about her. Now, you just run along home and... As soon as I finish my business with her father, I'll come right over and see you. Uh, don't tell Grandmother Sutton that you saw me here, will you? She doesn't understand business like, like you do. No, I won't, dear. Now, be a good girl and run along. Oh, Richard, you're so masterful. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. I've had a lovely afternoon. Uh, don't let your father keep my Richard too long, will you, dear? Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, darling. Uh, don't bother. I know the way out. Mm. Don't keep my riches too long. Doesn't sound as if you told her. I couldn't. Then you should be more careful, precious. Not let designing little cats like that think they've trapped you. Didn't you even hint anything? And have her run screaming to Grandmother Sutton? Well, it doesn't matter. Did you, uh, notice her hat? Hmm? Oh, oh, her hat. Yes, I did. Very pretty, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> I think it's my time to do a little shoving around. Run along, dear. I'd like to have a little talk with uh, Richard. Oh, all right, Dad, but only a couple of minutes. <laughs> you know, Mr. Cartwright, uh, talking about money. Yeah? <laughs> A silly notion, of course, but I was wondering what would happen if it wasn't true, after all. Say, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, now, supposing, just supposing, of course, that something were to happen and, and I didn't have the money, how would it affect you, for instance? Well, Richard, this being a hypothetical case, I can speak quite freely. Uh, let us uh, presume uh, an error had happened that uh, you thought you were rich and afterwards found out that you were not. Well, it, uh, it would be rather embarrassing uh, for all. And, uh, well, <laughs> we might uh, cease to be friends for a while. That's all. Uh, you, uh, then you mean that if circumstances were such that I... Exactly. If you or any other man should play such a trick on me deliberately to marry my daughter, I'd kill you. <laughs> oh, this is all rather ridiculous, of course. <laughs> of course, yes. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Time is up, you two. Mom, why so solemn? <laughs> there, that's better. Now, how about a little tea, huh? Have you uh, set the date for the wedding yet? Yes, I have, Dad. Oh. I want to make it right away, this week, if possible. Well, good. We'll make it Friday. Is that all right with you, Dick? Friday? Isn't, well, isn't that a bit... Sort of too. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make it Wednesday. Wednesday? <laughs> you Wednesday. young folks are so impatient. Wednesday be just wonderful, won't it, Dad? Good afternoon, friends. Well, it's near you. Charles Bayo speaking. Today, my talk will be a study of cumulative consequences. I have called it after the lie, what? Will it be social ruin, financial disaster, or even worse? What is the answer? 
And that was the only subject I could think of. I... You needn't apologize. It was a splendid talk. Oh, I, I'm glad you liked it. What's the idea of all the headache medicine? The idea, my friend, is that I want to forget everything. I'm going out and have a good time, and I want to be well prepared. Your pardon, sir. Who are you? The butler, sir. I thought for a moment you were the keeper. Who's butler? Yours, sir. This is your pardon. I come with it. What a pardon. Your pardon, sir. If this is my apartment and you are my butler, who am I? Well, you are Mr. Sutton, sir. Of course, I realize you must be quite confused. Last night, you see, when you came... Intoxicated? No, sir. Blotto would describe it. No doubt. I remember drawing $1,000 out of the bank and getting on the merry-go-round. After we hit the roller coaster, what happened? I don't know, sir. But when they brought you in... Who? Mr. Beckwith. And my employer, Mr. Wanamaker, sir. Mr. Chester Wanamaker? Yes, sir. This is his apartment. He loaned it to you. I go with it. But is the name. Oh. How do you do? Uh, is Mr. Wanamaker here now? No, sir. He doesn't spend much time here. The family, you know. In fact, they dragged him off to Boston this morning. Something about a chorus girl, I believe. Uh, he has my sympathy. Where's Mr. Bacon? In the living room, sir. He asked me to get you up, sir. Oh, oh. I can get myself up, thank you. Very good, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. What do you wish me to do with the cherry tree, sir? What cherry tree? The one you brought in, sir. You seem to be quite concerned about it last night. I'll throw it out. Yes, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. And this? What on earth is that? I believe you call it your own little hatchet. Oh, go away. Yes, sir. Very well. There's the morning paper, sir. Oh, my goodness. Oh. oh, hello. Who's this? Oh, hello, Emily. Look, is Linda there? I, it's very important that... Left town? Where? Are you sure you don't know? Oh, all right. Thanks. Goodbye. Do you have to swish your tails around like that? My head can't stand it. Listen, Dick. When a man inherits $3 million, is going to marry the richest girl in town, and is throwing away dollar bills like confetti, he may be considered local news. But when he writes out a $10,000 check to buy a round of drink, then he's international news. It's a good thing I was there to pick them up and pay the bills. What, with all the damage you did, it took all I had in the bank, $1,500. What a bonehead I am. You sure pulled me out of that jam. I'll make you out a check right away. I've still got 3000 in the bank, you know. No, you haven't. You drew 1000 to throw away, remember? I did? Yeah. I managed to salvage 300 of that by being faster than the other fellows. Good old Charlie. Oh, now, wait a minute. How about that thousand of the Red Cross? That was before you really got going and started writing out those big ones. I'm glad I at least did some good. I, I'm almost afraid to ask, have I anything left? No. That check to Steve Billings cleaned you out. Now, who on earth is Steve Billings? The horseman. Don't tell me I bought a horse, too. 
No, you just bet on one. But why? I never bet on a horse in my life. Well, here it is. Sixth race, Washington Park, our George, a thousand to win. You care for some warm coffee, sir? Ah, oh, thanks, Bottles. You're a lifesaver. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wanamaker told me you were taking over the place with all this joy and responsibility. Responsibilities? I hate to say it, but Mr. Wanamaker was always punctual as far as money matter. In fact, he seems to be quite embarrassed before he left. Hmm. He owed money to someone? To me, sir. A trifle, sir. A matter of $70. A month wages. Of course, I wish to stay here if I prove satisfactory. Oh, that's quite all right, Bottles. I'm glad you mentioned it. <laughs> Pay him, will you, Dick? Uh, you, what? Uh, you said $60, Bottles? Uh, $70, sir. Uh, there you are. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, will you forgive me for you to mention this to you? Oh, certainly. Will you have some more coffee? No, thank you. You can take that with you. Yes, thank you, sir. Free apartment, huh? Seventy bucks for a cup of coffee. That's cheap for a place like this. It gives us time to plan what to do next. Yes, but what about Grandmother and Barbara and Gwenny? They're going to start comparing notes when I don't show up. They'll keep for a while. I sent them each a telegram. Now, the only one who knows where you are is Dr. Hamilton. I had to tell him in case your grandmother takes a turn for the worse. Well, I... Yes, Bottles? I beg your pardon again, sir. Mm -hmm. The grocery man is here, sir. Oh, uh, uh, Bottles. Uh, don't ever bother us about uh, ordering groceries or anything of that nature. We leave all that to you. But this is not about ordering, sir. It's about paying for what Mr. Wanamaker had me ordered before. A uh, bill, huh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. How much? $70. Seventy, <laughs> huh? Well, let me see. There you are. Thank you, sir. And bottles. Uh, yes. Bring me another cup of coffee, please. Immediately, sir. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to drink it. <laughs> i better call Steve Billings right away and see if I can call that bat off. Mm. Where's the phone? There it is over here. Just my luck, the line is busy. I beg your pardon, sir? Ah, uh, how much? Uh, no, sir. Were you saying something about the sixth race at Washington Park? Oh, yes, yes, what? It's a feature race. I believe it's broadcast now. Shall I try it? By all means. Well, yes, certainly, sure. <laughs> I have a small wager myself in that race. A horse called Nicobob. The favorite. Two and a half to one. Uh, uh, Bottles, do you by any chance happen to know what price our George is? I believe the morning light quoted 60 to 1, sir. Uh-oh. Is that good? And I'm afraid not, by sir. a length. Royal side by two uh, lengths. And Nicobob yeah. by four lengths. And then through the stretch, it's Red Beauty by a half a length. Royal side by a length and a half. And Nicobob is making his move. It's Red Beauty Where's by a half a length. And Nicobob is second side by a length and a half. And Nicobob is making his move. It's Red Beauty by a half a length. Nicobob is second by a half a length. And now Nicobob is first by a head. Red Beauty is second by a length. And Royal side is dropping back. And again? Nicobob by a length. Red Beauty by four lengths. And here comes our George. They're there he is. For home, there he is. Come, come on, George. George and Nick Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Push him out of the way. George. Come in. Georgie. George. What are you doing? Georgie. George. Here. Uh, What's the matter with that thing? I forgot to mention it. A matter of $30 for the electric lights. Ah, oh, fine. How do you do? We might call Mr. Billing for the results, sir. Well, don't sit there on the floor and do it. I was hoping you would say so, sir. Yeah. The doorbell, sir. Should I answer? Yes, all right. I'll, I'll call Bill. Yeah, you get Bill. Here's the number right here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope the phone's still working. Yeah, so do I, so do I. I hope he's there, too. I, ho I hope our George was. Yeah. Oh, boy. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, hello? Uh, who won the sixth race at Washington Park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, hmm? He did? Oh, thank you. We lose. Nickabob won. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. It's Mr. Merkin, about to run on the apartment. A matter of seventy dollars. A hundred and seventy dollars, if you please, sir. Here. Thank you, sir. Who was it? Mr. Beckwell? No, sir. I don't believe Mr. Beckwell will be here for lunch. He mentioned something about uh, rearranging some finance. Well, it takes some arranging. Yes. Is the electricity turned on? No, sir. Well, then that isn't the radio. 
No, sir. It's a lady. Barbara, where's the fire escape? But I beg your pardon, sir. This is Mr. Wanamaker's fiance, Miss O'Reilly. Indeed. Yes. Well, tell her that Mr. Wanamaker isn't here and tell her to go. We can't have any women around this apartment. Oh, I couldn't do that very well, sir. Mr. Wanamaker is very particular about how they treat his friend. Uh, the woman is here to stay, sir. To stay? Permanently, sir, I should judge. Over my dead body. I'll get rid of her. Uh, diplomatically, I hope, sir. Diplomatically or otherwise. Yes, sir. Well, hello, good looking. Mr. Wanamaker isn't here, and I don't think... Oh, he... Yes, I know Bottles told me. Uh, you're Mr. Sutton, aren't you? Yes, I am. And Lorraine, did uh, Chester ever speak about me? Not that I recall, no. Well, how do you like that? Is he ashamed of me? Oh, uh, I'm sure it isn't that. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to marry him, you know. That's very nice. If you and Chester were married and all that, your being here would be quite the proper thing. But as it is, you see, you, you really can't stay. Why not? Well, that's a little too unconventional, my dear. Uh, oh, pretty short acquaintance for that, my dear, so. I was about to say, my dear young lady, Oh, there isn't... you're kind of cute. Ah, it's too bad I have to marry Chester. Huh? My brother says I do. Spike's kind of crazy. He got all upset last night. Said Chester should marry me or he'd kill him and all that sort of stuff. I had to pacify him, so I told him we were getting married this morning. <laughs> He's liable to show up any minute now just to find out for himself. Oh. Well, that's another reason that you can't stay. Maybe that's him. So much the better. He'll take you home. <laughs> you don't know Spike. I beg your pardon, sir. A lady to see you, sir. See me? Yes, sir. A Miss Gwendolyn Miller. Oh, my goodness. Well, don't let her in. I'm sorry, sir, but she's quite insistent. Well, uh, keep her out in the hall. Tell her the story of your life. Do anything at all. We, we've got to get rid of you. Oh, all right. Oh, gee, just... We were getting acquainted, too. Don't do that. I might see you. Now, let me see. Where we go? Uh, no, not out there. That's uh -huh. bad. In there? No, no. Uh, over here. Get over there. Oh, that coat, that coat, that coat. Cold. I'll get cold. I'll get cold. Yeah. Take it now. I've come to you, Richard. Gwenny, whatever possessed you? I've come to save you. To save me? From what? From yourself. Oh, my dearest, I was so worried after I read about that wild spree of yours. And Dr. Hamilton said you'd taken this apartment down here in the wildest kind of crowd. He says it's up to me to save you. He did. I've burned my bridges behind me, dear. I didn't say a word to anyone. I just packed my bags and came. I can't go back now. You not only can, but you must. Oh, dearest, that's impossible. We can be married tonight and... Whose hat is this? Well, uh... Oh, that, that uh, belongs to a former tenant. I found it and put it there to throw out. I think I'll look around. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? No, I do not. Uh, that, uh, that's my room. You can look in there first. But I'm sorry, Mr. Yidden. I think I'll look in that room. Well, go ahead. You're being very silly. There's no one in there. Oh, uh, excuse me. Who was that? Uh, who was what? You have the most suspicious nature. Oh, uh, yes, he is. No, ma'am, I was sure you he's not. Ah, uh, excuse me just a moment, please. Uh, sit right down there. Oh, hello, Barbara. Where's who? You know very well who I mean. That insipid little cat, Gwenny Miller. Hey! What's that? I'm sorry, Barbara. The radio's so loud I can't hear a thing you say. Bottles, would you turn off the radio? The radio, sir? Uh, yes, the radio in the bedroom. Oh, the, the radio the radio in the bedroom. Yes, sir, yes. You let me out of here! Now, uh, what were you saying, Barbara? Where is she? Where's who? You know who I mean. <laughs> Gwenny. I followed her here. Thought there's something fishy about that telegram. Out of town, my foot. Well, then, all right. Look for yourself. We'll, we'll start over there. That's, that's my room. Uh, 
<laughs> well, who is this? Oh, that's Charlie. Charlie Bakewell's wife. They got married last night. I thought you said this was your room. Well, it was, but we changed. They, they need a larger room now, with the children. Children? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, six by my first husband. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Bakewell. There's been a slight misunderstanding. Please apologize to your husband and the children. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to settle this thing right now. Who are you calling? My father. I'm going to marry you today if it's the last thing I do. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Spike O'Reilly. Well, don't let him in. But he's already in. Oh, he wasn't at home, huh? Listen, Chester. The name isn't Chester, and don't point. It's impolite. Besides, it might go off. It's gonna, if you don't do the right thing for my sister. Hello, Cosette. Is my father there? Who's she calling? The police. You can't get away with this kind of thing, you know. All right, lady. Put on that phone. I'm not calling the police. I only want to tell my father I'm at 1240 Midwick Avenue, apartment 208. Sit down here and keep quiet. Hello. Hello. Barbara. Ba oh, Cassette. Tell James to get the car, quick. 1040 Medwick Avenue, apartment 208. Yes, that's it. that's it. Now look, pal. Are you going to marry my sister or ain't you? He's going to marry me. Pipe down. Oh. Open the door. So that's where you got her, huh? Locked up like a prisoner. No. Oh, me poor kid oh. sister. Get me out of this Yes, place. I will. Just a minute. Me poor kid sister. <coughs> Who did this to you, honey? Tell your big brother. <coughs> so she wasn't here, huh? No. Yes. No, no. Wait till I get my hands on you. That man is all on the line of duty. Please, oh. don't you say that. You were pretty smart, what, what, didn't you? I can't make questions. Now, now, Gwenny, don't now, lose your temper. Now, Richard, by... you tell that woman you're going to marry me. Well, you tell her you're going to marry me. No, I ain't. He's going to marry my sister. What? Gwenny, look out for that gun. It might be loaded. Yeah. Gun? Ah! Well, here, you take it. No, I don't, I don't do want to take it. Oh, oh. All right, now. Let's everybody calm down. What did you give it to him for, you silly? What? Yo, sit over there. Yo, sit down. I will not. Sit down. Now, look here, Spike. Pipe down, Chester. That's not Mr. Wanamaker. That's Mr. Sutton. See you for yourself. Yeah. That's right. Hey. Maybe you're Chester. Sir, the name is Buttles. It might be the police. Better let them in before they break down the door. What are you trying to give me, the police? Certainly. I'm a rich man. I can't be too careful. I have a standing arrangement with the police department. They come here every day about this time to see if I'm all right. Okay, sir. Of course, answer the door. I'll be right back of this curtain. Not a peep from any of you, see? I'm sorry to bother you, Bottles, but I forgot my keys. Oh, Richard, I, uh, oh, excuse me, I, oh, 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 hello, uh, Barbara, how are you? Uh, and you, Gwendolyn, uh, how are you? <laughs> well, this is a coincidence, meeting here like uh, this, isn't it? <sighs> well, I think I'll be going. Is it all right with you, Dick, if I leave? Uh, yes, I think I'll go. Oh, look here, young man, what are you, oh, my goodness, uh, who is he? Pipe down, brother. I'll ask for questions. Do you live here? Well, yes, uh, yes I do, but I don't see what that That's has to do. That's all I want to know. Are you married? I am not. Wife and children. Your first name start with a C? Uh, yes. Aha! Uh... Uh -huh. Chester! No, Charles. Oh, another one. <laughs> that must be Chester. It's got to be Chester. Answer it, Bubbles. Bottles is the name. 
Where's my daughter? Daughter, who oh, just... Oh. oh, there you are, dear. Dad, I... And Richard. What's the meaning of this? Okay, okay. Tubby, calm down. So, that's what it is, eh? Keep quiet. I don't want you to talk. I just want you to answer me one question, that's all. No more, see? Does your name start with a C? Yes. Ah, Chester. No, Cartwright. John Cartwright. Oh, I know it, I know it. I can't stand it any longer. I gotta find Chester. I know what you're trying to do, but it won't get you anywhere. I knew as soon as these hoodlums found out you'd inherited three million dollars, something like this would happen. Shut up. I wanna think. I got it. I gotta find my sister. She'll tell me what to do. Looking for me, Spike, dear? Oh, Lorraine, where you been? Look, sis, tell me, which one of these birds is it? This is the one, Spike. Well, oh, he's gonna marry me. Pipe oh, down, pipe hey, hey, down. Hey, 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 hey. He says his name ain't Chester. I know it isn't. There isn't any Chester. I only told you that. Here's the man I love, Richard Sutton. <laughs> oh, you sure he's good enough for you, honey? What about these other babes? Sure, they all want him. He's got three million, Andy. Oh, gold diggers, huh? Hey, Bubbles, come here. That must be the police. Bottle is the name. Answer that door and tell them everything is all right. I'll be right in back of you. Now you two stay away from me. Now you are. 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 Mrs. Sutton? I must say, this is fine going on. Oh, Grandmother, what are you doing up? You better sit down. I'll call the doctor. I'll have no doctor. I'm through with that fool Hamilton and the rest of his ilk. Pa, with their pills and their medicines. Oh, now, Granny, you're not feeling well. You better sit down. I won't sit down. I'm not staying long. Look, lady, when my brother-in-law says sit down, you'd better sit down, see? Who is this vulgar person? Granny, you better do as he says. He's desperate. He is, eh? Look here, young man. You better give me that thing. Look out, lady. It's loaded. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, oh. Oh. Now, come here. I don't know what this is all about, but you're all going to listen to me. Richard, do you know who this is? No, I don't, Granny. Well, it's your Uncle Woodrow from Brazil. Hello, Uncle. Brazil? You mean the Uncle Richard inherited the money from? What money? Why, the three million dollars. Three million nothing. Why, he couldn't even afford to pay the cab fare from the station to my house. You mean he ain't rich? Well, how do you like that? Come on, Spike. Let's get out of here. Where are we going, sis? You and I are going to find Chester. Chester again? Oh, 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 oh. Never enter my house or I'll not be responsible for oh, what I do. Now, I'll tell you something. Before you heard about my ship coming in, as you call it, I wasn't even in a running as a son-in-law. No, but the minute you heard I inherited a few million dollars, then I became your social equal. Well, then I'm... it was all right for me to come in and marry this brat of yours. How dare you talk to my father that way? As for you, you're a willful, spoiled, pampered child. Is there anything else about me you don't like? Yes, your hat. Oh, how could I ever love a brute like you? Oh, it is an atrocious looking hat, isn't it? <laughs> now, Richard, why did you act like a schoolboy? Uh, now, Faith, uh... Oh, hush up. You were the cause of it all. Oh, but I, hush up, uh... hush up. Mrs. Sutton, Richard went through all this only to, uh... Am I an imbecile? I know why he did it. He lied senselessly to win that innocent child. You weren't man enough to go to little Gwenny and tell the truth about your earnings and your savings. No! You must lie and delude her with the belief that you were fabulously rich. Now, listen to me, Granny. Gwen is a very nice girl, a very lovely girl, but I don't love her, I never did love her, and I don't want to marry her. Is that so? Yes. Well, you listen to me, Richard Sutton. You should be ashamed of yourself running after me the way you have. I could never marry a man as deceitful as you are. Thank goodness my eyes are opened at last. Now, I'd like to say a few words. It's you who should be ashamed of yourself, you, you hypochondriac. You're as healthy as I am. Do you know why Richard lied? 
to save you the shock that Dr. Hamilton said would result if you found out he hadn't actually inherited the fortune. Is that true, Richard? Did you do just that to spare me? Well, Granny, Yes, I... he did. He lost his job and his savings, and it's all your fault. Oh, my boy, my boy. I'll make it up to you. I'll get Mr. Mitchell to take you back. Don't cry, Granny. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm just a meddling old fool. Oh, no, no, you're I'm not, sorry. Granny. I'm just I the nicest old grandmother in the whole world. Really, now, you should be Why careful don't you answer like... that phone? Uh, answer the phone. Uh, answer the phone. <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> really, really, I am. Yes, and it's going to be Would you like to right call the doctor for you? What? Who do you want? Yes. It's for you, Dick. Dr. Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton, eh? I've got a few things to say to him, too. Look here, Doctor. A fine mess you got me into with that false diagnosis of grandmother's. I... Well, I tell you, he's been trying all afternoon to get in touch with you. Yes. He finally called me, and I said I'd give you the news. Would you say that again, please? Slower? Thank you. What's the trouble, boy? Knickerbob was disqualified. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, no, Granny, that's good. Our George won. He's talking about a horse. What did he pay, Dick? Fifteen to one. And you bet a thousand on ha! him. Holy cow, fifteen thousand smackaroos. The horse, cows, a kangaroo. What are you talking about? Uh, Richard just won fifteen thousand dollars. I'm rich. Oh, no, <laughs> Come, Faith, don't break down. Everything's all right now. Yes, everything but Linda Pearson. Linda, yes. the Pearson girl. When does she come in? Oh, well, you see, Granny, we were engaged until this awful misunderstanding came up. Goodness, well, she'll understand. I'll tell the whole story. Uh, if you can find her, nobody knows where she is. I do. You? you? Sure. A very charming girl. We met and got acquainted on the train. Why don't you call up? She's probably home by this time. Call up nothing. We're going to... Oh, gracious. That thing was loaded, wasn't it? Come on. Come on. Oh, oh gracious. Suppose I shot him? Uh, no, I, I hit him with a vase. I... Oh. Oh. Bubbles. Bubbles. Are you alive? Bubbles is doing... He's, uh, been in there a long time. Are you sure you explained everything thoroughly? Uh, yes, everything. They'll soon come out billing and cooing like two turtle doves. Explain? Explain? You think all you have to do is explain to me and I'll believe everything you say. What about Gwenny and Barbara? And that O'Reilly person? I heard about her too, you know. Billing and cooing like two turtle doves, eh? <laughs> How can you explain that? Well, if you weren't so stubborn, it would give me a chance, you'd find out. Oh! Oh, so I'm stubborn, am I? Definitely stubborn. Listen, Richard, I'll listen to any logical reason but that story about Dr. Hamilton. And then sending your poor grandmother in here to make excuses. You think all you have to do is smile and you can sweep me off my feet. Ah, now that's a very good idea. Oh, Richard, put me down! Put me down this minute! I don't want to... Quiet! Now, will you come along peacefully or do I have to carry you all the way to the city hall? If you think I'll ever marry you, from now on, he's on his own. Uh, can you drive? And how? <laughs> oh, you can drive, huh? See? I fixed everything. And how? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>